Okay, this next question comes from Gabriel Chaparro. 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 All right, I can't say it. Sorry, Gabriel. Gabriel says, once you have created your unique service in what we would think would be a blue ocean industry, how do you determine the pricing when there's no competition to even form a baseline? Uh, background and business description is he's a day trader that also provides entry and exit signals to our subscribers with direct messaging. When we enter a trade, we go to the channel and type out the trade's detailed information. Usually we form alerts on a template to keep the channel organized. We ended up creating a software that automates the entire message composition to be posted in a template and sent out to our channel. So basically we linked a trading platform to a mass me messaging platform. Amongst other capabilities, the software saves us tons of time and tedious work. We now plan to sell this software to signal providers like myself. I'm asking this question because I have read the articles on calculating the price of a service, but most of them advise me to look at a competitor and to know my market. In my situation, I've not found a competitor. Okay, so maybe the competitor is they're doing it a different way. Maybe they were, maybe they're using Slack. Maybe they're using Facebook. Maybe they're using in, some sort of instant messaging software. Maybe they're using, um, what are, what are some of those, um, there's some apps that people use to do group texting and things like that. So maybe there is a solution that other companies are using, but there's no direct competitor to what you're doing. And let me give you an example because I went through this with my last company. I developed a kiosk software that I would install on a Windows-based PC, which would lock down the computer so that people couldn't make changes to the computer in a public computing workspace like a hotel lobby. That way, every time someone used the computer, it would erase itself so the next user couldn't steal somebody's password or see what they did on that previous session, right? Well, my competitor was a hotel going and buying a computer from Dell and putting it in their lobby and not having any software on it. Even though they didn't see that as a competition, I did. The computer was still in the lobby being used, but they just didn't have a software like mine on it. And I was one of the first softwares to be developed to put on these public computer workstations. I created the price in the marketplace. I took a look at how much money it cost me to do business, right? And I looked at what my goals were. I, look, I, I tried to anticipate what kind of personnel I would need on an ongoing basis, and I just set a price. Over the years, we increased our price as we needed to, and we made those changes. So in the beginning, you might want to make it really, really easy for people to do business with you since you're setting the tone of the price. If there's a potential for high volume, you just set the price and know that you're going to have a great subscription revenue coming in. Or you might set it really, really high if no other system can do this and somebody else would have to develop it themselves and spend tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. Totally your choice. There's good things and bad things to being the first to market with a solution. As soon as you go to market with a solution, expect that if it's a good solution, people are going to copy you and, they're, and you're going to have competition. Be prepared for that. Since there's no way in technology a lot of times to, to patent what we do, it's very easy to just go knock it off. So those are some things to think about. But I think you're in a good situation. I say just set the price at what you want and go for it and keep tweaking and pivoting along the way and keep us posted, all right? Congratulations on finding what might be a great blue ocean for your company. All right, take care.